Hey guys, it's Megan Fox. I write with PJMedia.com and you can find my articles there every day. I'm a journalist. I'm an investigator. Uh, I'm, I comment on things. And today, right after I ended the live stream, I found something that if I had found while I was on the live, I would have kept going. Uh, Libs of TikTok has put out uh, something really disturbing. So I'm going to warn you right now. This is not safe for kids. Do not have them around. I'm giving you the warning. Do not let them watch this. Uh, if you're a kid, you should click off of this immediately. If you're one of my kids, absolutely turn it off. Um, because a parent in school, in a school in Oklahoma, has reported to Libs of TikTok that they were removed um, from the school property for confronting the school board about a pornographic book. Now, I have no, there's no other way to to talk about this without showing the book. So I'm going to do it. Um, it is a, a graphic novel. It's graphic, all right. Uh, but we're going to do it. So again, here's your warning. <clears throat> uh, get any sensitive eyes away from the screen because this is highly disturbing. It's highly disturbing, okay? Um, here we go. Um, we spoke to a father who confronted his daughter's principal in Awaso schools, that's in Oklahoma, about a pornographic book, Blankets, which depicts sex, masturbation, and a child getting assaulted, sexually assaulted. The principal responded by calling the police and the father was banned from the school grounds. Now, uh, these images are really disturbing. Um, there's, it's graphic, uh, sex stuff. Then there's a really graphic scene with two little boys peeing on one another violently um, and forcing one down to assault him. And then another one with him peeing on a, a little boy who obviously does not want it. And his mother walks in and catches them. Um, and then there's this issue of being in bed together. And it it's just bad, you guys. It's, it's really bad. Okay. This is one of the worst ones I've seen so far. Holy crap. All right, let's get off of that. I don't want to look at that anymore. This is the letter that the father received um, on October 12th. 2022 from Owasso Public Schools. His name is blacked out. I am trying to get a hold of him right now. I've reached out. Um, dear Redacted, in light of your actions that took place on the grounds of the district on the evening of October 10th, 2022, after the board meeting, it has been determined that you have committed one or more acts that interfere with the peaceful conduct of activities on district property and your presence interferes with the peaceful conduct of activities on district property. Therefore, pursuant to Oklahoma statute title, blah, 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 you are hereby directed to leave the Owasso Public School and all of its grounds, including sports venues, and not return. This prohibition also includes any district activity or field trip not conducted on school property, as I have determined that your presence is a threat to the peaceful conduct of students. Should you fail to leave the school grounds immediately or should you return within six months without first obtaining my written permission to do so, the school district will have no alternative but to take such legal action as is necessary to maintain a peaceful educational and work environment. As per Board Policy 1.24, a request for reconsideration may be filed by you so long as it is received by the district within five calendar days of your receipt of this letter. Sincerely, Dr. Margaret Coates, Superintendent of Schools. So I'm going to call Dr. Coates and we're going to find out uh, what it is that this father supposedly has done. He did. Uh, before we do that, though, I'm going to play the board meeting because I found it. There were only three fathers who spoke and all of them were very calm and rational. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, it, it, it did say that it happened after the board meeting. So we don't know what the um, incident after the board meeting was. And that's why I will be calling the district. Now, I just want to let you know, though, that these school districts will often use this banning from school grounds um, as a way to keep parents from confronting the board about these controversial issues. And it happened right here in New York to a friend of mine, Shannon Joy. She was banned from school grounds from even picking up her children from the Fairport School District because she led a protest to the school about masking.
And they they banned her and they banned a bunch of other parents for the same thing. And it was absolutely unconstitutional. She's in the middle of a lawsuit that's going forward against that school for doing that to her. They also called the police on her, tried to have her arrested or they did have her arrested in, in one uh, at one board meeting, uh, absolutely absurd, and she's suing them. So this is a tactic that bad school boards will use against parents. So I'm not convinced that this man did anything uh, that should lead to his banning of any sporting events that his kid is at, or even picking up his child at school. Uh, it better be something extremely volatile. Let's let's listen to the comments of three men, the only three that spoke at the public comment, and uh, let's hear this. Do we have no volume? What's going on here? There Maybe. we go. Can you hear me now? All right. So uh, placate means to temper, to mollify, to calm someone. Usually the connotation behind the word placate is to uh, give some superficial action to do so. That's why it's usually uh, used in a negative way. Unfortunately, that's what's happening here. I'm being told that this uh, part two and this 1.86, it says materials are selected which fill a need related to the curriculum and or contribute to the development and enrichment of the student is the same thing as we are not going to allow pornographic material in the school. Sorry, but I don't read that. I don't see it. It's not there. It doesn't exist. That's called placation. Some words that are meant to, I don't know, sound good on paper, make somebody feel better, act like we did something. Um, it's not gonna keep books like the one that my daughter checked out. That, um, I don't know how long all of you have been here, but it was here for 18 years. 18 years, this book with children urinating on each other's faces, kids being molested by adults, God. Ejaculation into napkins, that sort of mess in graphic depiction. So I come to you and I ask, can't we just say that we're not going to put that in the school? Not, not word books, not innuendo graphic innuendo stuff, none of that. No, no, no. Just graphic sexual images. Can the school board just say, we don't want that in the district because the parents in our district they agree, we don't want that stuff in here. From everybody that I've talked to, yeah, Blankets, that was the name of the book. They didn't like it, shouldn't be in here. So I don't see why there is a problem with putting that language in there that's very explicit. Now the board, I just want to remind you all that you are in charge here. It is not the administration that is in charge, it is you guys. You have been tasked and elected to do for the community what we have asked you to do. And we're asking you to do a very simple thing and that is say very narrowly that graphic sexual imagery does not belong in the school library anywhere. I don't know why that's so difficult to put down in writing. I don't know why we are arguing that, well, we're following the law, Mr. Ryland, those things aren't illegal and therefore we can't prohibit it, which is what I was told today. Uh, but that's why we put in policies so that the parents thereafter, just like myself, after the child has already read it, can go back and, and complain to the board so that they can further placate with their superficiality with this mess of curriculum contributed to the development enrichment of the student. If I wanted to, I could argue that all kinds of different ways. Well, it's okay if we show ejaculation into napkins or urination into children's faces or molestation in graphic images because that's part of sexual development. Lots of kids get raped and deal with that sort of thing. You could argue that one way or the other. So it appears to me that you don't wanna put it in there because you want some wiggle room down the road whenever somebody decides that one book that does show those things, well, you know, we want that in there for these students, but, but not these other students. Unfortunately, I, the parent, have been told that I'm not allowed to go into the library during the school hours. So I have to schedule a meeting to go in there and what? Peruse through the library because the librarians who, like Margaret had said, work very hard and I trusted them. And unfortunately, look where that got me. 
my child reading this salacious crap that I've been spending her whole life trying to avoid, and it happened at the public school. So all I'm asking very simply is to, I don't know, divert away from the American Library Association who actually gave this book an award, and is likely that's the reason why it was put on the shelf in the first place. So let's back away from that and say, no, Owasso is better than that. We have higher standards than that. There's no reason to not do it unless you want this material to be accessible to children in the future. That's all I can think of. I can't think of any other reason why you wouldn't expressly prohibit that kind of crap. They do want school. it there. They do. He's right. And they also want him to make an appointment to go look at the you, Mr. books so they Next can hide them all before he gets there. For subtopic 9, Section B, also the school library book selection policy, Mr. Ron Cosby. So I believe that it's been one of these three dads uh, that was thrown out. I don't know which one. And we will try and call the school and find out why. Good evening, everybody. I'm speaking on the same thing Tim's speaking on. I'm speaking on the same thing that three fathers came to y'all last board meeting and spoke about. And we're just adamant as a community that we don't want this filth and pornography in our schools. Mrs. Coates came up here and read 3092 that the librarian's responsibility is finite. And I, I don't care as a father what that bill says. It's, it doesn't mention pornography, which I know that all of y'all have received the book that Mr. Ryland spoke about. And you yourselves as parents and grandparents would not sit down and read that book to your children or your grandchildren. But yet we have students like Mr. Ryland's children who checked it out in our public schools. So we get pushback as parents saying, well, you're just trying to ban books or burn books. No, we're not. We're just trying to protect our children from pornography. And I can't find any literary or educational value in the book that Mr. Ryland is talking about. I would be hard pressed for any rational adult to find any type of educational value in that book. There isn't this policy any. needs to be revised and it needs to be specific. Y'all really need to think about this. Who, who are you protecting? The children? the librarians, the teachers, or the community that you reflect and you're uh, elected to serve. So that's all I have to say. These guys are hitting it right on the head, by the way. It is the American uh, Library Association also be speaking that is responsible for this. Uh, the policy 1.86, Mr. Josh Pearson. The American Library Association has been behind this from the beginning, and they are hiding these books under diversity, equity, and inclusion, right. pornography. Um, board, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and address you. Uh, I find it a little disheartening and a little dismaying that this is the second time that I've had to come address you for the same thing. Um, in the policy that you guys are considering, you guys are taking verbiage from the American Library Association as the quote unquote library bill of rights to heart. This is an organization that is dedicated to eliminating and prohibiting any form of censorship, even if that means putting a age restriction on pornographic material from their website. They have, they have large sections of the website that, that are dedicated to reporting challenges to books and hate crimes. That's the same button. They consider challenging a book a hate crime. They, they ask for very specific information about who challenges books, but they promise anonymity to the librarians or other people who report potential challenges to their organization. When discussing this American Library Association and their views on censorship, they take issue with having any sort of censorship on internet access, even in school libraries. They say that the negative effects of content filters on internet access in public libraries and schools are demonstrable and documented. 
Consequently, consistent with previous resolutions, the American Library Association cannot recommend filtering. However, the ALA recognizes that local libraries and schools are governed by local decision makers and local considerations and must often rely on federal or state funding for computers and internet access. Because adults, and to a lesser degree minors, have First Amendment rights, libraries and schools that choose to use content filters should implement policies and procedures that mitigate the negative effects of filtering to the greatest extent possible. This is an organization that wants our children to have unfettered access to everything. They do not want internet filters. Why would they want books to stay out of schools? The fact that you are relying on words from their preamble, from their bill of rights that they're saying is the height of hypocrisy to me because the words that you're using are in the resolution and that you guys are gonna accept for how parents like myself, like these other fathers, like these other parents, challenge books. This is an organization that doesn't want that to happen. I would urge the board to reconsider this policy and require that the superintendent and the district take any references to the American Library Association out. We do not want to support an organization that wants unfettered access for everybody, including minors. That's what they say on their website. Thank you. He couldn't have said it any better than me. And if you want to know what's behind this, you need to pick up my book. It's called Shut Up, the Bizarre War that One Public Library Waged Against the First Amendment. That's my mama on the cover. You probably recognize her uh, for from the, uh, the last video that I posted. But this book gives you all the inside information on why this happened in libraries, why the American Library Association association became uh, what they became, who they are, what that freedom to read bill that he's talking about really is. It's not a law. It's just a private organization making up these horrible rules filled with radicals to uh, systemically change our, our, our system and indoctrinate our kids. And this book, it's, it's, a, it's a mouthful, but I'm telling you, it was a three-year war against one public library that kept calling child porn information. It was very bad in Chicago. And um, it, this shows you how to get around this and how to fight back against these people. And these fathers are absolutely right. And you can pick this up on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. The fathers are absolutely right that the American Library Association is behind it. And these schools have no obligation to follow the American Library Association's recommendations. They have no obligation to follow their um their strategies to lock parents out of conversations. And in fact, they should reject the American Library Association and, and only work with parents in their community um, to, to live up to the standards that their community expects. All right, we're going to give a call now to um, the superintendent, see if we can find out what actually happened there. Her name is Dr. Margaret Coates, and I'm going to give her a call right now. See if we can get her on the phone and find out what is it that happened? Why was this father banned from the school? Oh, I hate the interference. Thank you for calling the education system. How may I direct your call? I'm looking for Dr. Margaret Coates, please. May I say who's calling? Yes, my name's Megan Fox. Okay. And is she expecting your call or will she know what this is regarding? No, I don't think so. Okay. Can I tell her what it's regarding? Sure. Uh, I'm a member of the media. I'm calling about a story about her school. Uh, a father is reporting that he was banned from school property uh, for disrupting the peace and um, for an incident before a school meeting on October 10th. I'd like to find out what that incident was and if there's a police report because I am writing about it. I'd like to know if the school has a statement or anything. Okay. Sure, just a moment. I'm 
Sorry, the superintendent is currently in a meeting. I'm going to transfer you to her assistant, um, and she'll take your information so that she can get back with you. If by chance she doesn't pick up, please be sure and leave a message, and they'll return your call. I, I do want you to know, and maybe you can tell her, I am working under deadline. I do have to get this done immediately, so if I don't get a statement okay, from can, the school, I... Right. So so share that with, her, with the superintendent's assistant. Just a moment. Okay. Your call is being forwarded to a MyTel voicemail system. I'm fucking real. Renee Klein is not available. Please leave a message at the tone. When finished, you may hang up or press pound for additional options. Hi, Renee. My name's Megan Fox. I'm a reporter. I'm working on a story about your school district. A father is reporting that he's been banned from all school activities and school grounds after confronting uh, the school board about some uh, controversial books. And I read the letter from the school. It said that there was a uh, an incident after the board meeting. I'm wondering if you can give me a call and let me know um, what was that board, what was the incident. I, I'm hoping to hear from Dr. Coates. I am working under deadline though. I need to hear back from somebody ASAP. Does the school have a written statement about the incident and what occurred? Is there a police report? Um, you can email me at meganfox.writer at protonmail.com or Dr. Coates can call me at, and um, I would love to hear back from the school. If there's a written statement, you can email that to me. Anything that you do send me after my deadline can be added to the uh, article afterwards. Um, but I would say that I have about three hours uh, before I need to turn it in. Um, so it would be great if I could hear back from somebody before then. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry for the interference. They never, they, once they find out who I am, they won't take the call. They just won't. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Really? <laughs> So as soon as I call, this stuff always happens, and then they run and they don't answer the phone. Unacceptable. Be brave. Don't be a coward, okay? Don't be a coward. And then you know what's going to happen? If they do call back, I'll be at my kid's swim meet, so I won't be able to take the call. I, I mean, just that's what's going to happen most likely. All right, so what can we do? You know what we can do? We can call the police. That's what we're going to do. We will call the police and us wherever. Us wh Awaso, Awaso, Oklahoma, Owasso Police Department, Oklahoma. Let's call them because if police were called, uh, there should be an incident report. So let's find out if we can get that. Thank you for calling the Owasso Police Department to speak with the emergency 911 operator. Mm -hmm. Pressed zero. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it any time or choose from the following. For administration, press one. For records, press two. For animal control. Records. Wait while I transfer your call. The Lassa Police Department. Hi, is this the records department? Yes, it is. All right. My name's Megan Fox. I'm a reporter, and I am looking into an incident that occurred on October 10th at the Aswaso School, the board meeting. Um, there's a report that a father was uh, banned from the school for an incident that happened after the board meeting on October 10th. I was wondering if there are any police reports that corroborate that, that claim. Were police called on October 10th to the school? I can take a look. Hold on one second. Thanks. Do you know about what time that occurred or would have occurred on the 10th? Yeah, let's see. Is there a time? That's a good question. Uh, I don't think they put a time of date, but I, I think the board meeting is in the evening. Um, okay. see. They accused him of disturbing the P or interfering with peaceful conduct at school. Let's see if there's a time on it. It does not say. It just says October on the evening of October 10th, 2022, after okay. the board meeting. Okay, let me take a look and see if we had any officers respond. To one of the school. Do 
you know which school they had it at or did they have it at the administration building or does it say it sounds like it was at the it? district the grounds of the district it said in light of your actions that took place on the grounds of the district on the evening of october 10th at, after the board meeting so the district property would be actually i'm not sure is that a I don't know if the address they put on this letter is the same as the district property or not. They put 1501 North Ash Street, Owasso. Yeah, that's the admin building. So let's take a look and see. I am not showing any calls to the admin building. Okay. And I'm not showing that we got any calls for any disturbance call outs for uh any of the schools on that evening and you sure it was october 10th well that's what their their letter says would it be okay it, it would be normal for them to call you right if there was some kind of disturbance wouldn't they is that policy if that they needed if they needed assistance then yes if they needed police assistance then yeah they would have called in and had one of us dispatched to the scene hmm but I'm not showing uh, any, I'm not showing any call out to any of the school locations. Okay. Monday evening at all for October 10th. Do you ever have a police, does, does the Owasso police ever have a presence at the school board during the meetings? Only if requested, it's not a standard. And there, would you be able to tell if anyone was at that, anyone was requested for that meeting that night? Uh, I'm not showing anything like on our, that I wouldn't have it, a note of it. No, that anybody was just there to be there. Uh, you could okay. probably call the school and see yeah, they if won't there was take an my officer call. on standby. They won't take my call right now. They're not, they're okay. not returning anything. So just okay. trying to figure yeah. out what happened. I mean, I know we have, uh, we have three SROs that are assigned to the schools like on a daily basis, but if any of them were there for the meeting um i wouldn't have note of that unfortunately i'm sorry is there a way that i could maybe um get the names of those sros and maybe call them and just ask yeah you can um contact sergeant goodell g-o-o-d-e-l-l -L. he's actually in charge of the um officers for okay. the sros great and i can give you his email address all right so that's interesting so we just we just figured out that uh uh the the there were no police called to the event. So how disturbing of the piece could it have been if they did not call the police? So now let's go send uh, Sergeant Goodell an email and see if he can answer this question. Going to go do that right now. And this is, by the way, how I write my articles for PJ Media, because when I see something online, I have to verify it. So I've, I saw it on Libs of TikTok, and now I start making my phone calls. I call the school, call the police, email whoever, whoever I need to. Adele at hello, Sergeant Goodell. The records office suggested I contact you and ask um, I'm working under deadline and I'm looking into an incident that the uh, Wasso school superintendent claims happened on October 10th at the board meeting uh, in the evening on district, district property. I've attached an image of the letter I'm referencing. Um, the superintendent, hold, you are, oh, you're going to empty my garbage? Yep. Thanks, buddy. Also, if you find any paper towel rolls uh -huh. or toilet paper rolls, yeah. please give them to me or put them in my room. Oh, you need some for school? The no, I don't need some for school. I want to make one. 
um, make a fort for me and Ethan because Ethan said he okay. might be free tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to have a bunch of those rolls by tomorrow, but I will start saving them for you, okay? All right. Shh. In the middle of something. Love you. cardboard boxes would be fine. Cardboard too. boxes, too? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Anything bud. cardboard. Anything cardboard. Gotcha. All right. I've attached an image of the letter I'm referencing the superintendent. The superintendent says that a father disturbed the peace after the board meeting. Okay, that's about as, as far as I can get with this right now, I think. I mean, I can't call the school back. I would if I could. All right, so I will let you know what happens uh, later. Take care.